Well, here they come. My squint podcast. Today I'm from the Ravana Cemetery. Memorial Day. I'm part of the celebration. It is my distinct pleasure to introduce Pastor Clint Abbott of Nuevo as our guest speaker today. He graduated and licensed, ordained into the pastoral ministry. He and his wife Michelle have three sons and two grandsons. Clint has been senior pastor at four different churches. And a point of interest, he has 16 relatives buried in this cemetery. His family has a long history in, in Ravenna. In fact, to his family had a had a sawmill right close to the Slocum sawmill back in the old days. So he goes way back. Um, Clint gained some, some notoriety when he edited a book out of Albania that was published in 2013 about the 870th Medical Air Evacu Evacuation Squadron whose plane went down in Albania in November 1943. The group trekked 800 miles in 62 days through Nazi-occupied Albania to escape. The book was featured in a front page story in the Grand Rapids Press. And I think uh, the, the, his memoirs were found, Clint. I'd let, let you expound on that a little bit. But anyway, uh, please welcome Clint Abbott. Thank you, Mike, and thank you for an opportunity to be here to speak. When uh, Mike asked me very special for me. As he said, uh, my, family, my family came here from Canada in uh, about circa about 1860s. Um, uh, my great-great-great-grandfather worked for Giles Slocum building docks and piers in Canada and Detroit, and then Giles Slocum, as if you know your history, was a land developer here in East Muskegon County, and he had the Slocum Mill and Slocum's Grove, which is just a couple miles north of here by Lakedon, and uh, to, as Mike said, just to the west side of that, um, my great-great-grandfather uh, had, had an Abbott sawmill there as well. In fact, some of my family members are right off <coughs> to my left here, off, off by those golf carts. Watch where you stop. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Um, um, over there, and then I got some up here. There's about, about Mike said, how many family members do you have here that's in Ravana Cemetery? And I said, 16, and that's just off the top of my head. There could be some others. So we have, as he said, a, a great history. <clears throat> my dad was a World War II veteran uh, serving in the 807th Medical Air Evacuation Unit Squadron. Uh, from 1940 to 1945, and if you just think about it, <clears throat> medical air evacuation was a new thing uh, during the war. And they were stationed in Catania, Sicily, and they were flying wounded soldiers back from the front lines. <clears throat> Their plane got caught in a storm uh, going from Catania, Sicily to Bari, Italy. And long story short, they didn't realize that they had flown over the Adriatic Sea into Albania, which was occupied by over 700,000 German troops at the time. And so they crash landed the plane. There were 30 Americans. There were 13 enlisted men, 13 nurses. All the nurses were lieutenants. So uh, all the nurses were uh, higher ranked than the men, except then you had the four guys the plane, the pilot, the co-pilot, pilot, the crew chief, and the radio guy. And so it took 62 days of uh, under, or members of the Albanian underground worked with them and walked them to safety. They couldn't travel the main roads because the Germans had those, so they had to hike over mountains and very, very difficult trek for them until finally being rescued. That was from November 13, 1943. They were finally rescued on January 5, 1944. So um, my dad was given, as, as well, all of those in the 807th were given this wing boot. It was called for members of the late arrival club because they had been missing in action for 62 days. I wear that wing boot today to uh, honor my dad. I still have many of his things. So, um, but I want to share with you just a few moments, uh, maybe a word, a message to encourage you 
and to see what, what as we honor those who have sacrificed for us, maybe what we can learn both from God's word, from their lives, and what can we, how can we apply that to our life, and I promise I won't go long here, but... You know, if you just think about how do you want your life remembered? Um, many years I served, many years ago I served in middle management before, uh, while I was preparing for ministry, and we were challenged by some, some different speakers and books that we had to read, and the thought was, how do you see your life? What's the vision of your life? And the idea was, if you, if you want to have a vision for your life, just look ahead at a moment like this. When people are gathered around, what, do you, what is it that you want people to say about you? And then the idea was to order your life and to live your life like that. And so, uh, how is it that we want to be remembered? And those that we honor today, how might they have wanted to be remembered? <laughs> Because I did family history, I've spent a lot of time at this cemetery. I mean, a lot of time at the cemetery, cleaning tombstones and all of that kind of thing. And and so um, I've come across, you know, if, if I could say it this way, what would be the epitaph? What would be that thing that people write on your tombstone that says something about you? What is it that they would say about you? I found some interesting ones. Here's one that's. Stripped of its lettering and gilding, lies here food for worms, but the work shall not be lost, for it will, as he believed, appear once more in a new and more elegant edition, revised and corrected by the author. I thought that was just beautiful. Uh, Frank Sinatra's epitaph on his tombstone said, The best is yet to come. And John Quincy Adams, one of our presidents, said, This is the last of earth, I am content. But you know, I also came across some rather humorous ones, some funny ones. One that said, I told you I was sick. Uh, another one that said, here lies my wife, here lies she, hallelujah, hallelujah. Um, I like this one in particular. The children of Israel wanted bread, so the Lord sent them manna. Old clerk Wallace wanted a wife, and the devil sent him Anna. I hope there's no Annas here. Stepped on the gas instead of the brake. And of course, here lays Butch. We planted him in the raw. He was quick on the trigger, but slow on the draw. So, so, how is it then that we might want our life remembered? I actually have a great example found in God's Word by a man by the name of Barnabas. And Barnabas um, was a man that. Um, was, was uh, not considered to fill in the 12th uh, as the 12th apostle. When Judas hung himself, they had a, a vacancy for the 12th apostolic position. And Barnabas was there, but he was not considered. And we're going to look at his life, because there's a lot of negativity in our world. I see a lot of division in our, in our culture today. Sometimes this world looks a little bit... And I think we can see what Barnabas lived his life. We see that with those that uh, we honor today. Let me just read a short passage uh, from the book of Acts. It says, now those who had been scattered, talking about Christians who had been scattered by the persecution that broke out when Stephen was killed, traveled as far as Cyrene went to Antioch and began to speak to Greeks also telling them the good news about the Lord Jesus. The Lord's hand was with them, and a great number of people believed and turned to the Lord. News of this reached the church in Jerusalem, and they sent Barnabas to Antioch. And when he arrived and saw that the grace of, what the grace of God had done, he was glad and encouraged them all to remain true to the Lord with all their hearts. Here's the underlining thought. He was a good man full of the Holy Spirit and of faith, and a great number of people were brought to the Lord. Like I said, Barnabas was a man that may have been overlooked for that important apostolic position, and yet we see in his life he was such an encouraging person, all right? Uh, Barnabas, uh, and so I think that we can learn from the legacy from Barnabas has had, as well as those around here that I believe their lives reflect that which we see in Barnabas. So what is it that we see in Barnabas that I'm offering to you today? Well, the first thing is, Barnabas was a good man. 
He was generous with his time, with his talent, with his treasure. He made the right choice. He had excellence in his life. He had integrity. You know, that word integrity um, comes from the word integer that means wholeness. And he has had a wholeness about his life. He made the right choices. He did the right thing in the moment of choice. In fact, and that's what I hope we can do. I believe that those who have, that we honor today served our country well by making the right and serving our nation with integrity. And we can have that same integrity. Now, thinking of the word integrity and making the right choice, here's a story for you. There's an old story about a fabulously rich man who, as he was lying and dying, summons to his bedside his three most trusted friends, his doctor, his priest, and his lawyer. When the three are assembled, he tells them, I know they say you can't take it with you, but I'm going to try. He then distributes three identical and very thick packages, each of which turns out to contain $10 million in cash. I want all of you to come to my funeral, he says, and when they put me in the ground, throw the envelopes in after me, promise me, and each friend in turn promised. In the course of time, the rich man died. His three friends attended the funeral and at the cemetery. Each tosses in the thick packet into the grave. Then as they begin to walk back to their cars, the doctor says, my friends, I have a confession to make. Last night I was sitting in my office thinking about the new wing. Uh, we can do much more than that. And so I gave the $10 million to the hospital to build this children's wing, and what I threw in the grave was just simply an envelope full of newspapers. But well, the lawyer just kind of rounds on him in a fury. Uh, the money, he said, was given in trust. The doctor was a trustee, and by converting the money to his own use or even the use of a charity, he has violated a sacred legal duty and perhaps has committed a felony. Now the lawyer is still in full cry when, not so fast, says the priest. I was sitting in the church last night thinking about the church's efforts to raise enough money to endow the soup kitchen and the homeless shelter I had been running. I too finally decided that it was better to put the money to good use and to bury it, and he quotes the use of the, the parable of the talents. So I gave the money to the soup kitchen and the homeless shelter, and I also stuffed an envelope newspaper, and that's what I threw in the grave. Now, the lawyer is just nearly blowing a head gasket. He can't believe it. A fiduciary duty, apart from the law, he says, there's the friendship to be considered. You have disobeyed the promise of a, to an honored friend, trusted friend, your closest friend. You should have done what I did. In order to be absolutely certain that I carried out the friend's request with the most meticulous care, I put the cash in my safe in the office. And there it's still safe from harm. Then I wrote a check for $10 million, and that's what I put in the envelope and put in the credit. All right. Maybe we have a little bit more integrity. But they stepped up with integrity and did the right thing in the moment of choice. Not the easy thing, but the right thing. They were good people of integrity and wholeness. So Barnabas was a good man. Integrity. The Bible says in Ephesians 5, 18, that we should not be drunk with wine where in excess, but we should be filled with the Holy Spirit. Now Paul writes that, and he uses that, uh, that's actually a military command, it's what we call in the Greek, the imperative move, to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And so it's not a take it or leave it matter. He's saying you need to have the Holy Spirit guide you and direct you. And just as wine, if someone has too much wine, they start, start to do things that they normally wouldn't do, and there's a characterization that comes out of their life and people just can't believe that that person is the same person because they got had a little too much wine. Well, the same thing is true with the Holy Spirit. He said, just, as, the, as the wine can, can, can change you, let the Holy Spirit change you. Be filled with, if you're going to be filled with anything, be filled with the Holy Spirit and let him guide you and direct you uh, into becoming all that you can become. And Barnabas was that. Barnabas of the Holy Spirit. In fact, Barnabas was such an encouraging person his name is really, if you, if you read the scripture, um, 
His name is really Joseph, but the apostles called him Barnabas. And the name Barnabas means son of encouragement. He was an encouraging person. People could look at his life. They could see he was filled with the Spirit of God. They could see that God was in his life and guiding him because it came out. People saw that. In fact, the other apostles were also filled and led by the Holy Spirit because how else would you explain these fishermen, these Galileans, these people from up north, if you will, and, uh, and yet that people People could see they were uneducated people, and yet they, they saw the power with which they operated their lives. They saw something great coming out of their life, and they knew they had been with Jesus, and they could see the Spirit of God filling them. You see, what you have in you shows up, it comes out, it shows where you have been, and it talks all about you, what you have in you. Now, my wife and I, uh, for years, on this weekend, we would always uh, go up to the UP, we'd go up to Mackinac Island, and then to the Upper Peninsula. And I found one time this little note at a hotel that we stayed in in St. Ignace. And I found out that UPers, UPers, any UPers here today? Any UPers? Uh, none that want to own up to it, huh? So, um, they have a unique sense of humor. I found this, and it says this. The Michigan Department of Natural Resources is advising hikers, hunters, and cross-country skiers to take extra precautions and be alert for wolves and coyotes in the Upper Peninsula. We advise that people wear noise-making devices such as little bells on their clothing to alert the wolves that you are coming. We also advise you to carry pepper spray in case of an encounter with a wolf. It's also a good idea. Coyote droppings. Coyote droppings are smaller and contain berries and possibly squirrel and rabbit fur. Wolf droppings have little bells in them. And smell like a Those that we honor today, at least collectively speaking, I think I can't speak for every person that uh, who, who here is here, but uh, collectively speaking, I believe those that we honor will move by the Spirit of God to not only do the right thing, but to show a supernatural will, if I might say that, and to fight for our freedom. I think I can safely say that moved by the Spirit of God, those who fought freedom's fight showed an indomitable spirit. A, a, a fortitude that keeps going. My dad, when he wrote his book, his memoirs, actually the memoirs is what the book was. The, the book came from the memoirs. And he said uh, as they were walking through Albania's mountains, and this is November, December, and early January, well actually they're in the mountains in November and December of 1943, he said that it took a savage will for I believe, of course, that's what the Spirit of God does in our life. It can be a driving force in that life. So these that we honor today, many of them were young people. But again, collectively speaking, I think the Spirit of God was, God was at work in their life, showing the world and us today something different and something to be desired. So we see that in the life of Barnabas. We see that in the life of others. They were good people, had integrity, filled with the Holy Spirit. And then third, Barnabas was full of faith. He had faith in God. I remember growing up and up learning this thing, faith is just believing what God says he will do. He will never fail us. His promises are true. If we but believe him, his children we become. Faith is just believing this wondrous thing God has done. The Bible says that without faith, my faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who must come, must, uh, come to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who diligently or earnestly seek him. Faith-filled people are positive people. Glass to fill the flow overflowing. Barnabas was a positive person. I believe that that faith-filled people are positive people. They have that I can do type of attitude. Reminds me of the story of this African king. He went out on a safari, and his trusted servant, who would always say, "This is good." was with him, and his trusted servant was to load his gun, the king's gun, and prepare it, and as they were out there, the king went to shoot his gun, and when he did, it backfired on him, and it blew off his thumb, and the servant said, this is good, and the king says, no, this is not good, this is bad, and the king had the man thrown into prison, 
And the man said, this is good. Well, 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 about a, about year, a year had passed. Had passed. The king was out on another uh, safari uh, with those uh, around him. Uh, and uh, uh, they were they caught were by cannibals, cannibals headhunters. headhunters. And, and they were they tying them up to the stake and they were going to eat them. them. Yeah. But they but noticed they that the king, the king had, had no thumb. thumb. And, and in their, their culture, culture, they considered they a person with no thumb unclean, not whole, not good. And so they untied him and they let them go. And the, and the king, king just felt, felt so bad, bad uh, about, about his servant. He remembered his, his, his servant that he had locked away. And so he went there and he said, Oh, my, my friend, I'm so sorry that you had to be here. And the first thing, words out of that man's mouth was, This is good. And he said, How can you say that after I treated you so badly and you were in prison, wrongly accused for over a year? How can you say this is good? And his friend says, Because if that hadn't happened, I'd have been out on that safari with you. <laughs> All right, right, so, so positive, positive attitude. attitude. Still, 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 you know, you know, faith-filled faith people are positive, positive people. people. Barnabas Barbara had great faith in God, and he had great, great faith in people. people. He believed the best about people. people. He, didn't re he refused to listen to the bad report. When, when the Apostle Paul, who, by the way, had been named Saul, and he had persecuted Christians, but he became a believer, and people didn't know how they felt about him. They were a little leery of him. But Barnabas came right along his side and supported him and spoke the best about him. He believed in him. He didn't listen to the rumor and the bad report. How often times do we, instead of thinking the best about people, believe the rumor, believe the bad report, and don't think the good things about people? I remember there was a story about Abraham Lincoln. There was a story that uh, Abraham Lincoln's body had been stolen. And so they set out, they investigated it, they against his own family's wishes, his body was exhumed, only to find that Lincoln was still right where he was, how he should have been. But it drove the nation to foolishness for listening to the bad report. Faith-filled people think that they, they believe in God, they have strong faith, they're positive people, and they believe in the best of people. And they do that because Faith-filled people who are positive people are here not to listen to the bad report, but to lift others up. Another story, last one. A man fell into a pit, and he couldn't get himself out. A subjective person came along and said, I feel for you down there. An objective person came along and said, it's logical that someone would fall into that pit. A Christian scientist came along and said, only a bad person would have fallen. Saved, you never would have fallen into that pit. An Arminian said, you were saved and you still fell in that pit. A charismatic said, just confess that you're not in the pit. A realist came along and said, no, that's a pit. An IRS man came along and asked me if he was paying taxes on the pit. An evasive person came along and avoided the subject of the pit altogether. A self-pitied person came along and said, you haven't seen anything till you've seen my pit. An optimist said things could be worse, and a pessimist said things will get worse. But Jesus saw the man in the pit, reached down and took him up by the hand and lifted him out of the pit. And see, that's what I think life is about. It's our job to lift other people up and to encourage others. Barnabas did that. Those that we honor today, collectively speaking, had faith in God and believed the best about people and what they accomplished. Summed up best by former president and general Dwight Eisenhower, he said this, I follow this example by trusting God and by thinking the best about others. And so my thought today is let's be faith-filled people who are positive, who think the best about people. Let's let the Spirit of God drive us and lead us. And let's do the right thing in the moment of choice, as Barnabas did, and as those whom we honor have done. Let's pray. Father, thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for this time that we can honor those who have sacrificed for us. They have sacrificed their lives so that we can have freedom. And I thank you. that we could have the ultimate freedom from sin and have salvation.